Good morning, good morning, family. Good morning, church. Uh, we are back here to our eleven o'clock Friday morning devotional time with Pastor Ramon. I hope you guys are doing well. This is a beautiful sunny Friday. Um, it's just uh, nice out there. So I hope you get to um, go out for a little bit uh, just to enjoy the day somehow, maybe a little walk. But um, in the meantime, we have a devotional for you, and today uh, we continue with the. Um, um, uh, is there any prayers? Is there any prayer that we've been, you know, just uh, going uh, maybe line by line, word by word, kind of thing? So it's not kind of like a series. We're just going through it as we as we are able uh, on this devotional. And uh, we already talked about serenity. What what that is, you know, is it is the, the the bottom line. It is the peace of God um, that we need through this difficult time. Uh, or any other time, we always need that peace of 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 God and uh, the, the 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 peace in our lives. That um, even during troubled times, you know, we can find that God that will sustain us, that will strengthen us, that will give us what we need to go through those moments. So um, we talked about uh, um, being courageous. You know, find the the courage uh, to do things. And and I think that that we talked, and it was very clear. We only get that through God. Um, God is a strength. God is our only place to go, our only refuge, our only fortress. You know, the only place that we can go and hide and be protected, and that is God. And there, um, in in Him, in God, we can find the um, the courage. Uh, we talk about wisdom. You know, what that is is not so much knowing a lot. It's not so much you know being a a doctor or or a teacher, someone that went to school and got wise. Um, that's what one way or one kind of uh, wisdom. But the one that we're talking is the one that comes through the Holy Spirit. Uh, that is is seen through the lens the lenses of the of the Holy Spirit. So that's something that we we gain not because of our own strength, but it's just given to us through God. And so uh, we talk about that today. We are actually talking about um, enjoying or 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 taking one day at a time. Uh, we have such a fast life, you know. We 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 like things really quick. Um, so before we get into that, I'm gonna. Let me see if I can do this really quick. Uh, I will put up the serenity prayer uh, for you guys. And we're going to open up with this prayer. And uh, hopefully we can stop and think at every single line and how we study that. And uh, hopefully you'll find some uh, encouragement today there. Um, if you have any need or any prayer, you can you know you can throw that prayer in there as well, and uh, and just trusting in the presence of God, God will listen to those prayers and um, and respond uh, to that need. So let us uh, let us say this prayer. If you know it, you can say it. If you um, um, if you can read it, you know off the screen, you can read it off the screen, um, and then uh, say it aloud with me. Okay, so surrender your prayer. Let us pray. God grant me the serenity or grant us the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, courage to change the things I can, and wisdom to know the difference, living one day at a time, enjoying one moment at a time, accepting, accepting hardship as the pathway to peace, taking as Jesus did the sinful world as it is, not as I would or we would have it, trusting that we will make that we will that he God will make all things right if we only surrender to his will that we may be reasonably happy in this life and supremely happy with him forever and ever in the next and we say amen 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 so um I was thinking, okay, what can we do? What Bible verse we can get to, to use this? And I think the base of this Bible study, devotional time, is the story of the people of Israel through the wilderness. We know um, they, uh, they were in slavery uh, in Egypt, and uh, Moses uh, sought the injustice uh, over the people, and he realized that he needed to do something. 
So he couldn't stay quiet. He went away for a little bit. The Lord found him and then brought him back and sent him to Pharaoh and say, go tell Pharaoh to let my people go. And, um, you know, we know the story. Uh, finally, uh, Pharaoh was willing to let him go. They went out. As soon as they left the, uh, Egypt, he went after them. And so um, we know the miracle right there. God uh, acted uh, with his power, opened the sea. They went through and they were safe. Um, now, the story, though, after that, after they crossed um, the sea, we know that the people were happy. The people felt like positive. People felt like encouraged that things are going to be OK. Right. Well, not long from there, we find out that the people started to look back, to look back of where they were. One, because they didn't have water. Two, because they didn't have food. Um, so. Uh, that you know that sounds very familiar a lot of times you know we, we we look back to the past and we hammer you know we we hit ourselves with it um i think there's a point in life when we can look back and learn from our experiences but not keep you know hitting ourselves with it we made mistakes yes we probably did and probably have and we probably will but not because you know, we did that. That doesn't mean we have to live by that. We can learn from those mistakes, move forward. The people of Israel had that in mind. And it was like, ah, right? Moses and Aaron, they just kind of like, uh, probably they, they pulled their hairs off, right? But when they complained so much, Moses, you know, talked to God. God said, you know what? I'll, I'll make a miracle. I will let him know who I am. And then there was. God gave him water, right? Um, and this is, now, this is happening um, uh, just right at the beginning of the journey, okay? They haven't even been two months in this journey and they're already looking back at, 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 uh, at what they had in Egypt, okay? So if you have your Bible, okay, I hope you do, please open it up in Exodus, 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 uh, chapter 16, okay? That is the story that I'm talking about here, okay? Uh, Exodus chapter 16, so if you have your Bible, you know, you can read later on. It's, it's the whole chapter talks about the story of Moses and the people of Israel uh, going through the wilderness and where God gave them manna. God gave them bread, okay? Because they were complaining over and over about what they had in the past and now they have none and they wish they will be back in slavery because even, because even though they were in slavery, um, they had food. So here in verse 13, 13 of chapter 6, and it says, In the, in the evening, uh, quills came up on and covered the camp. And in the morning, there was layers of dough, uh, dew around the camp. When, they lay, uh, when the layers of dew lifted there on the surface of the wilderness was fine flaky substance, as a fine as frost on the ground. When the Israelis saw it, they said to one another, What? is this right what what is this right okay so i'm gonna stop there you can continue reading um it is the whole complaining and it's all god saying i'm gonna act on this request because they are hungry and they want food so god gave him food in the morning god gave him food food at night right and god uh acted for one reason okay for one reason just to show him that god's still with them and god is there provided and they don't have to worry about anything else why because when uh, when Moses came back to the people and said, this is what the Lord said. The Lord says that you will have food every day and that you will pick for your family, depending on how many in your family, you're going to pick that much food and you will not keep for the next day because God will give you on the next day. Now, some people didn't trust that. Some people didn't believe that. You know, this is where it comes living one day at a time, you know, one day at a time. Don't worry about tomorrow. Take care of yourself today and 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 that's where uh, God is saying you know don't worry about tomorrow I will take care of tomorrow I'm giving you enough for today so so Moses is telling this to the people some of the people actually were obedient to that but some of them gather you know like a, like a, that, that's a human thing kind of thing you want to gather up and feel safe for the next day because you want to have enough for the next day because you don't know what tomorrow is going to bring right so you want to have some sort of security god said no need for that okay i got you i got your back and the people didn't didn't believe that they did not trust that word so what happens they go back some of them got and got so much uh, 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 um, thinking they were going to have enough for the next day. 
And guess what? That all went bad, right? They couldn't keep for the next day. That's what God says. I want you to trust me. I want, to, I want you to trust me that I will take care of you because you already forgot what I did two months ago. You know, I, I did great things to get you out of Egypt and you already forgot about that. Okay, I just gave you water and you still not, uh, you, you, you just forgot. So now I'm giving you food. I'm, I'm showing you who I am. Okay, I'm going to guide you through the day. I'm going to guide you through the night. I'm going to give you food in the morning. I'm going to give you food at night. So he's, you know, God is, do, God is doing all of this. So, okay, I'm going to slow down now because I wanted to get through that. God invited to the people to gather daily because God was going to provide daily. That's important for us to understand, okay? Because we, we do, every Sunday, say a prayer. So if you have your Bible, again, if you have your Bible, I want you to look at Matthew 6, 10, okay? If you have your Bible, you're not, you can look at here. It says, your kingdom come, you will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. What is that? Yeah, you're right. It's the Lord's Prayer. When the disciples asked God, Jesus, to, to, to teach him how to pray, he said, when you pray, pray like this. Okay, make sure you understand that God will provide you every day what you need to eat. You know, I keep saying that we're the temple of the Lord. God wants you to be well, body, mind, and spirit. God is, is, is worried for the physical uh, well-being of you. You know, God will give you food. And that's important. That's important to remember. And that's why this, 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 this prayer, the Lord's Prayer, we say every Sunday, it's important because not only we give thanks to God, we ask for forgiveness, and we ask strength to forgive those who hurt us, and, and, you know, and we go all down the line, and then we, we give thanks for the food, and we ask for what? For this daily bread. You know, we ask God and God always provide. I don't think it's been a day when we don't have any food. You go outside and you can find food anywhere. So going back to the story of Exodus, okay, um, the people wanted to gather up and said, no, 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 they couldn't. Okay, the only day, the only day they, they could, they, they were able to gather for two days. It was on the sixth day because the seventh day was for resting. They couldn't go out and find some food. God provided even for the seventh day, for the, se for the day that they have for rest. And God provided for that too. You know, that was the only day that they were able to gather up for the next day, according to the family. Anyway, so back to the story of where we fit into the story here. Okay, God is calling us to trust and live one day at a time. Do not look forward of what can happen in the future. A lot of what the future brings, okay, or a lot of what the future has for us, it has to do with what we do today, not with what we did in the past. The past is in the past. The future is still in the future. The present is the gift that we have to do something with that. And that's the day that we need to live, as we are saying in the serenity prayer. We're living one day at a time and enjoying one moment at a time. Okay? So, God, through the story of Moses and the people of Israel, is telling us, that he's got our back. God has our backs. And that we don't have to stress so much about tomorrow. And you might be thinking, what's going to happen to me in the future? What's going to happen next week? What's going to happen next uh, month? Well, I'm going to tell you. God will be there with you through whatever you think is going to happen. God will be there with you, getting you through whatever you think that. So you're not on your own. You know, the people had to go out in the morning. He said, God said, if you gather more than what you should, it's going to go bad, right? And it did. You need to go early in the morning, gather up enough for you for today and for your family, right? Otherwise, when the sun comes out, everything is going to melt, Everything is going to melt. So God is inviting us, you know, to act on it today. If you don't act on it, it'll melt. And that's what God is telling you. You need to go before the sun is up. Because once the sun is up, those flakes are going to be gone. It's going to dissolve. 
they're going to dissolve, okay? So that's important to remember too. We're going to tie that at the end. But what we're trying to do here is to, to, to trust, just like the people, God is asking the people of Israel to trust Him. I will give you for tomorrow, okay? James, James 4.14, if you have your Bible, please open it up. James um, chapter 4, verse 14. Okay, I'm going to plug my, plug my phone as you open up your uh, Bible so I can um, get this over. Okay, so, uh, so it doesn't die on me. I'm sorry. Okay, so James is saying, yet you do not even know what tomorrow will bring. What is your life? For you are a mist that appears for a little while, for a little while and then vanish. What is that telling us? What is that reminding us of? The only day that we need to worry about is today. The only day that we need to act on is today. That doesn't mean, you know, that if you have stored some money, some savings and things like that, you go and spend them and waste them. No, 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 no. The God, God is not saying that. It's don't get caught up in those things. If God is providing you, God will provide you for today, for tomorrow, and for the future. And that's where we need to understand here. And that's what God is trying to tell the people of Israel. And that's what Jesus tried to tell, tell the people that were listening uh, when he was teaching in the, uh, in the Sermon of the Mountain. Right? Look at what it says, Matthew 6. Matthew 6, really quick. Okay, we're not going to get too much into it because it's too much information there. But it says, do not worry. Therefore, I tell you. Do not worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more than food and the body more than, than clothing? Look at the birds of the air. There, um, they neither sow nor reap nor, uh, nor gather into barns. And yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not more valuable than they? And can any of you by worrying add a single hour to your span, to your span of life? And why do you worry about clothing? Consider the lilies of the field. How they grow, they neither toil nor spin. Yet, I tell you, even Solomon in all his glory was not clothed like one of those. Oopsie. So what is Jesus trying to tell the people? Do not worry about tomorrow. Today is the day. God will provide today and will God and provide for tomorrow. You are important for God. God wants you not to worry, not to stress, not to have some sort of anxiety. And that's what this prayer is inviting us to, to take one day at a time, enjoy it, enjoy the moments of our life. Uh, the verse on, on, on verse uh, 14, on uh, Matthew 6 says, so do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will bring worries of its own. Today's trouble is enough for today. See? So do not worry. And that's what God is telling the people. Do not worry for tomorrow. I will give you tomorrow. If you pick more than what you should, it's going to go to waste. You don't need it. I will give you tomorrow for tomorrow. And I will give you today for today. Okay? So, um, in the Bible, in, 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 in John, you know, God is talking about him being the bread of life. We know, you know, when people saw this food and they go, what is this? You know, and they call it manna and, and they have to go in the mornings and they have to pick it enough for the day. And then the next day do the same thing. God gave him the same food over and over and over for how many years? 40 years. The Bible says that God gave them this food for 40 years. They ate the same food for 40 years. Talk about eating the same food over and over, right? And not get tired. What they did not. The Israelite ate, um, verse 35, the Israelites ate manna 40 years until they came to the habitable land. They ate manna until they came to the borders of the land of Canaan. And uh, an omer is the, the, the tent of an, uh, on a FF. FF. Anyhow, the Israelite ate what? Manna. For how long? 40 years, 40 years the same. You know, I was thinking, I was, uh, as I was prepping um, this morning at the gym, uh, I was just reading and listening and, and hearing some sermons about it. And I was listening, how is it that people ate this for four years and they didn't get, you know, they didn't get sick of it? And two, how is it that they got all the nutrients from that food, from the meat of the birds and the manna from the bread? Um, it was a very nutritious meal. And whatever that is, I think I'm going to go on a 
quest on finding what that is because I want that food. You know, I do a lot of prepping and a lot of fixing on my meals to make sure I get all the nutrients. They didn't have to worry. God gave them enough, right? That's where we want to go to understand that God will provide exactly what we need down to the macros of our food. God is worried for you, not only for the physical, not only for the spiritual, but also for the physical, for the emotional. God will give you and provide what you need every single day. So there is one thing, though. That we always need to remember. And that is in John 6, 25. Okay. John, and we're going to close with this. When they found him on the other side, other side of the sea, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you come here? Jesus answered, when? Verily, truly, I tell you, you are looking for me because you sought signs. But because you ate your fill uh, of, the, of the loves, this is talking about the feeding of the 5,000. Do not work for the food that perish, but for the food that endures for eternal life, which is the Son of Man will give you, for it is on him that God, will Father, God the Father has set his seal. Verse 28, when they saw Said to him, when they said to him, What must we do to perform the works of God? Jesus answered them, This is the work of God that you believe in him who he has sent. Okay, that you believe in him whom he has sent. So they said to him, What signs are you going to give us then so that we may see it and believe you? What works are you performing? Our ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness, as it is written. He gave them bread from heaven to eat. When Jesus said to them, very, very, very truly, I tell you, it was not Moses who gave him the bread of heaven. But it is my Father who gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is that which comes down from heaven and gives you life to the world. They say to him, sir, give us this bread always. And Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry. Whoever believes in me will never be thirst. How beautiful that word is. Let's treat the word of God as the manna that people receive. We need that nourishment every single day. To go through life and the things that comes with it. Okay? The only thing that we need to be worried about being nourished. And nourished by the word of God. Every day we need some sort of uh, spiritual feeding. Okay. And that is the manna. That is the, the word of God. That is God bread from heaven. It's Jesus saying, Jesus, I am the bread of life. We need Jesus. We need God. We need the word of God every single day. Now, if you treat it like the, the, the people of Israel, this is very important. Okay. First of all, you know, it came from heaven. It came from God. And the Word of God, we know it's inspired by God, right? It's inspired by, by God through people, of course, but it's inspired by God. We don't have to, like, try to figure that out. Let it be, okay? Two, we need to eat it. We can't just look at it. We can't just say, well, I have a Bible and that's all I need. No, we need to open it. We need to read it. We need to make lines. We need to make notes. We need to, like, get into it, right? We need that nourishment every single day. Every single day. You know, like, like manna. If, if, it, if, it, if it just sits there, it's not going to do any good to you. You just need to get into it. So you got to eat the Word of God. You got to be nourished every day, okay? Now, the people went out and got this, right? They have to be on their knees. What is that telling us? Well, maybe maybe that we need to, you know, pray a little bit more and be be more in contact in contact with the presence of God through the prayers. You know, we we can experience God everywhere. Home, at the park, at the gym, everywhere. You go, you can experience God. But we need that moment where we can just kind of be in the presence of God, just like Moses will go and talk to God in a special place, right? All right, and then the last one. We need that daily. God is inviting us to come to Jesus, to come to the bread of life, to come to the word of God daily. We cannot skip a day. We cannot say, well, I'll save it for tomorrow. Today is a day in the that the Lord wants us 
to be filled with the Holy Spirit, filled with the Word of God, filled with the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ. May God bless you as you go through this uh, journey that you that we all experience and very different, very difficult, and at times tiring. But we need to start living one day at a time. No worry about tomorrow. Don't worry about tomorrow. Worry about today. Act on today. You know, get up early in the morning, just like the Israelites, just like the people of God. Get up early in the morning and gather up the Word of God. Gather up, you know, that moment with the Lord, the moment with the manna from heaven, which is the Lord Jesus Christ. May God bless you through this time. And hopefully uh, you get to be inspired. Again, Exodus 16 for you to read throughout the week. James 4, 14, Matthew 6, 25, 34, and then uh, Matthew 6, 10. Uh, Matthew 6, 10 uh, and 11, the Lord's Prayer. And then John, John 6, 25 through uh, 35. When Jesus is telling the people, I am the bread of life. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry. Let us eat this bread every day in the comfort of your house, the comfort of this devotional or on Sunday morning. Just open up the scripture and be filled with the manna, with the word of God daily. Let us pray. God, grant us Grant us the serenity to accept the things I cannot change. Courage to change the things I can. And wisdom to know the difference. Living one day at a time. Enjoying one moment at a time. Accepting hardship as the path to peace. Taking, as Jesus did, the sinful, this sinful world as it is. Not as we would have it. Trusting that He will make us all things right if I surrender to His will that we may be reasonably happy in this life and supremely happy with Him forever in the next. Amen. May God bless you, and I hope uh, we can uh, continue to trust that God will provide for the next day and for the following day and for the years to come. Uh, may God uh, help you through this moment, and, and if you're experiencing some anxieties, uh, troubles, uh, please call us. And uh, let us know so we can pray with you and for you. May God bless you as we continue to trust that God is there with us and providing every single day for the single day that has given us. God bless you. Have a good rest of the day. Adios.